Here's how to set up email templates in high level that you can use and reuse in your automation workflows. So just a little bit of context here. In high level, there's a beautiful automation workflow engine which is very powerful and allows you to automate a lot of your marketing and sales activities. The problem is, if you write emails in the automation workflow builder and you want to change that email in the future, you'll be forever chasing your tail down a weird rabbit hole trying to find where the email is and which workflow is sending it. So High Level also has a section where you can save email templates and then you can just reuse those email templates and reference them in the automation workflow. I'll make an, a separate video about how to program your automation workflows and reference the email templates, but in this video, I just want to show you how to set up your email templates. So I'm logged into my white level demo version of high level here called Rockstar CRM. And I'm actually logged into one of my locations, one of my sub accounts called the music nerd. So once you're in your sub account, come down to uh, the marketing section. And this is based on an assumption that if you're watching this video, you have already loaded the the list builder snapshot into your high level account and then loaded that snapshot into the sub account that you're working in. So come over to marketing, come over to emails and templates and you'll notice that there are a couple of folders here from the snapshots that we've given you, a list builder snapshot and our appointment funnel snapshot. We like to keep them nice and organized in folders. And so if I come into the list builder folder, you'll find there are two email templates here. The first one is called deliver free resource. And the second one is called follow up free resource. Ooh, I wonder what that one's all about. So if I have a look at the deliver free resource email template, it'll open the email builder. It's a very plain email that I'm sending here. There's a whole argument on whether or not you should use plain text emails versus HTML designed emails. Uh, I'm of the preference that you should just keep them as simple as possible and as plain as possible. In fact, if this was my business, I probably wouldn't even have a logo on the top. I'd just have it look like it just came from my inbox. Uh, but that's a philosophical conversation for another day. So you can change a logo here and the please change the copy here. Don't just copy and paste what I'm giving you. Model it and use it as a starting point. My email template says uh, hi, contact first name, and that obviously will pull the contact first name out of the high level database. Thanks for requesting the free resource on our website. Your job is to change what's in the square brackets, free resource, to whatever the name of the free thing is that you're giving away on your website, the checklist, the template, the cheat sheet, whatever it is. You can download your copy here. Now, if I click on this link and then click on the link button, you'll notice that this is referencing a trigger link. I've made other videos that should be here somewhere about trigger links and how to set them up in high level. Uh, but just to recap, trigger links are essentially where you store the links that you want to put in your emails. Um, it allows you to keep your trigger links nice and organized so you can go and just update them in the future. If they do change, you don't have to trawl through individual emails and update the URLs. But more importantly, we can trigger actions based on whether someone clicks on the link. So for example, if they click on a link, we can notify our sales team to put in a phone call and say, hey, I saw that you downloaded the free resource. Uh, do you need some help with it? So this piece of text in our uh, email here references that trigger link. Then I just say, and again, this is my personality, please change this for your, your own brand. I say, can you do me a quick favor and hit reply? Let me know you got this okay. The internet does funky things sometimes and I like to know that we're delivering on our promise. Hope you're having a great day. And I did have someone reach out to me in Messenger, Messenger the other day and say, hey, I downloaded that snapshot, but some reason I didn't get the email for the free training. Can you sort it out? And I logged in and there was an issue which I fixed. So uh, it seems to work. P.S. This is important. If you ever want to talk about how we can help, just email me. I'm happy to jump on a call anytime. Finally, I'll send all of my email subscribers regular emails with tips and ideas to help them achieve desired outcomes. Again, just change what's in the square brackets there. Uh, if you do not want to receive these emails, click the unsubscribe link below and High Level should put an unsubscribe link at the bottom of every email you send so you, they can just click unsubscribe and take themselves off the list. The only other thing you want to be aware of with the email template builder is under the ellipsis here, you've got your settings and this is where you set the person who is sending the email, their uh, name, their email address, the preview text and the email subject. Now, whatever you put here, if a automation workflow references this email, it will automatically pull these settings in to that automation workflow, okay? So username, user email. So this is the user that the contact is assigned to in high level. So if, if it was me, this would be Troy, it would be my email address. 
preview text says, thanks for requesting the free resource on our website. You might notice that's the same as the first sentence here for consistency and congruency. Again, you want to just change what's in the square brackets. Uh, and then the email subject is, Paul, here's your download. Uh, super easy and we're done. All right, let's come back out to the email templates folder now and have a look at the follow-up email template, which surprisingly is almost identical to the first one we send them. The only thing that changes is the subject line and the first sentence. Hey, Paul, in case you missed it, here's the free resource you requested on our website. You can download your copy here. That again is a trigger link. The rest of the internet is identical. The rest of the internet, the rest of the email is identical. If I come up to settings, the only thing that's changed here is the preview text and the subject line your download is inside. So in the workflow video, I'll show you how to program your workflow so that they get the follow-up email 24 hours after the first email. So imagine the user experience, and I always want you to put yourself in the seat of the user experience and the recipient of these emails. They get the first email, they might not open it, they might not download it, they might be busy, they might have forgotten, they might think it's spam, right? They might have changed their mind. 24 hours later, they get this email, the subject line is different, so it prompts them to open it. We're saying, in case you missed it, here it is. We're just being super friendly and super helpful, okay? I'll show you how to program this in the automation video that I've got coming. Keep your eyes out for that. That is it in terms of programming the email template. So again, I just want you to think about writing your emails once for your customer journey and your prospect journey, and then saving all of these emails in folders in the email template section here in high level. And then in the future video, I'll show you how to use your automation workflows to reference these emails. It's just gonna help you stay super organized. This video is sponsored by High Level, but they have no say over the content. Obviously, I'm simply sharing this stuff because High Level has been a game changer for my business and I know it will help you too. All right, I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in the next video. I'm Troy Dean, let's get to work.